Author of the best-selling book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell discovered in his research that it takes 10,000 hours of practice for anyone to become very good at what they do. Popular American comedian Jerry Sinfield was once interviewed about his success secret. He said he woke up one day, got a 365-day calendar and decided he would write a joke for each day and mark it off on the day. He missed no day. He wrote boring jokes some days, but he got good by the end of 365 days. Michael Jordan agreed that he chew 500 basketball shots every morning before going to school and he became a proficient basketballer. For two years, I wrote every morning by 6 a.m. until I was able to build my writing skills to start several businesses around writing. Author Jeff Goins wrote every day for several months until he developed his writing skill and wrote the best-selling books, The Art of Work. Aristotle said, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. The simple point of all these, you are what you repeatedly do. You're a product of your habits. You become what you repeatedly do. And if your life must change, it begins with changing your habit. If you change your habit, you will change your life. A wise man said, your habits now give an insight into your future. Behind every success is a habit. The cliche goes, your company describes who you are. A quick look at the things you do daily shows what your future will look like. Your character is formed by your habits. Bad habits are easy to build but often difficult to break. Habits cannot be hidden. You may hide them, but they reveal themselves soon enough. If nobody sees them, you do. It's like seeing a child's poor creativity and still insist that the child be an artist. Equally so, an undisciplined spender cannot manage wealth well in future. Jesus said, He who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. Your habits show people who you are. Your habits make you. The things you do every day, the decisions you make, your countless choices are the keys to the future you are creating indirectly. But bad habits can be changed. Great habits are formed by self-discipline. It is often difficult to break old habits, but self-discipline can help you build strong habits and help you build success. Given the right efforts, habits can be changed. This self-discipline is the quality of character that lets you do what you should when you do not feel like doing it. You won't always be certain. You will often be paralyzed by uncertainty. But self-discipline lets you go on in faith, even when you would instead give up. Everyone who had often waited to be certain before they launched out have found they never got anything done. Every successful person will testify to moments of doubt and uncertainty, but guided by logic rather than emotions, they move on to their goals. Wrestler John Cena, responding to an interview, said, There are moments in life where it gets so hectic that time becomes a blur. Keep calm and never give up. Self-discipline wouldn't just let you give up. It urges you to keep pushing. It brings you several reasons why you shouldn't let go just yet. This doesn't mean discipline is a hard call. To succeed in life, one needs to succeed in subjecting oneself to discipline, not just in the aspect that success is desired. Successful people do not just subject a part of their lives to discipline, they immerse their whole being in it. Discipline can be needed in the place of habits patience, communication, eating, even sleeping. It takes 20 focused hours to learn a skill. That's about 45 minutes daily in a month, said the analyst David Brown. If you learn a set of work in the morning and another different set in the evening for a month, you would have learned two new skills in a month. A total of 24 new skills in a year. Isn't this amazing? So besides sleeping and talking and going through life aimlessly, you can do something worthwhile with your time. 
Learn deliberately. In purposefully curbing your poor sleeping habits, you are subjecting your entire being to discipline. You are learning, your body is being disciplined, and you are living healthily. Self-discipline is the master key to riches. In time past, people have been known to go to great lengths to attain a certain feat. Napoleon Hill, after interviewing 500 of the richest people in America, concluded that self-discipline is the master key to riches. Wealthy men, then, are men who had subjected themselves to discipline. Some of these men have been given the bad eye severally and called names behind their backs because they are calculative spenders. You would have to be prudent if you want to be successful. A quote says, too many people spend money they earn to buy things that they don't want, to impress people they don't like. And wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few ones. Having too many ones impact negatively on your spending habits. Imprudence in your spending habits will eventually lead to a poor life. An extravagant spender is headed nowhere but towards poverty. Successful people spend only on what's most important. Berkshire Hathaway, owned by Warren Buffett, is the fifth largest Apple shareholder with 134 million shares worth about $23 billion. As of this writing, Warren Buffett has refused to trade his flip phone for an iPhone. He said, when I buy it, that is an iPhone, it is all over, folks. The last person has bought it. He would never buy an expensive phone just because he wanted to show he was rich. Here is a man who knew what was most important. Your spending habits can determine your financial future. There's the story about a waiter's experience with Bill Gates and his daughter. The daughter, after dining, left a $500 tip. Billy, on the other hand, left $5. With a strange look, the waiter told him, on this same table, your daughter gave me $500, while you, her father, the world's richest man, is given $5. Bill replied simply, well, she is the daughter of the world's richest man, but I am just the son of a woodcutter. That is a man who wouldn't let life expectations of him restrict him from being himself. Despite the wealth he had amassed, he would not forget where he came from, and that's another level of discipline. Sweat, blood, respect, the first two you give, the last one you earn, said Dwayne Johnson. You don't try to earn respect by buying it. It's earned by your sweat. People see it. They know it. They respect it. It was what the waiter may not have understood. Even if Bill Gates decides not to tip him, he remains the world's richest man and that's never going to change. Some, however, have been lost in this truth. They'd rather be respected out of paid loyalty than earn it. It takes discipline not to want the easier route to getting things done. This discipline is built, not paid for. You must work for it. You must make it a habit. You must inculcate the habit of discipline into your existence. If this video inspired you, subscribe to our channel. We love you.